Hey guys, welcome back to Tactical Edge. This is Riley and we are part three of three of uh, what I would and wouldn't recommend gearbox housings. So we are up to the metal housings, but this is uh, just uh, APS metal housings. So what's in uh, Phantoms and AKs and etc. cetera. Uh, everything I would recommend in this, uh, can be in the metal AK range and I can explain the difference um, because some of the stuff that you would need for this you wouldn't need for that and I'll explain that later but uh, let's get into this one so this one is just a blank shell that I have I don't have anything in it but we can put stuff in it <laughs> um, so what I would and wouldn't recommend what I what I see people do is they try and change the cylinder heads, the nozzle, and the tapper plate. And the tapper plate uh, has to be stock. It, it cannot be metal in any way because, as I said before, it will cause those problems. The cylinder head and the nozzle uh, has to be kept stock because this gearbox has been designed around that piece only. If you put anything else in there, feeding issues, FPS problems, jamming issues, because it's not designed for that, it's only designed for what it comes with and that's what it likes. So if you put anything else in there, it will not work. The piston, you can have SHS piston or a nylon piston, that is fine. Um, because the cylinder head is nylon, like a bomb, Yes, you can have a metal piston head, again, without, you know. Without the red O-ring, but you can have a metal, I wouldn't really recommend this one, but you can have a metal piston head, or, or a bomb piston head and green O-ring. So yes, you can have that, that is fine. Um, so for gears, you can have 18 to 1s or 16 to 1s, and that's the lowest I would really go. I wouldn't go 30 to 1s because you can't really fit them in the APS ones because of this little metal sleeve here. It won't really fit past it. Um, so SHS gears, Kublai gears, and bigger gears just fit and drop straight in. But... But the difference with Lernex gears, and we've only noticed this with Lernex gears in some gearboxes. Some gearboxes, these just drop straight in and they're fine, they're sweet. But I know that for Lernex, uh, for, for APS and Gen 8 uh, and Gen 9, you do have to Dremel the housing. So, uh, see this little, you know, the cutout groove for the bevel gear. When I want to put this in, um, and it's only on this side for the Gen A and Gen 9, it was on this side, but for the metal one, so so the Lynx gears will vary in what gearbox you're putting in, but you can see it's, it's very, it won't even move. It is that tight because of, let's see if you guys see it, where the, um, the collar is for it, so you can see it's like the bevel gear is really rubbing tight around there. It's probably r really tight rubbing around there and in here as well. So I'll just get that out. You just get the Dremel and you just file out these pieces, file out that piece, that bit there. You can do this bit, but just be careful because this piece here is very, very thin. So if you do too much on just this bit here, it may come through, but you just want to be very gentle going around in here. So there's fine, that's fine, just be gentle there. Um, but this whole collar piece will have to be dremeled out for this bevel gear to fit in. But once you do do that, just that minor little piece, 
These just fit in absolutely fine and amazing and they work really well. Um, really, really well. So that's probably the only thing you would have to do to this housing to fix, to fit Lonex gears in. The other thing is uh, the springs. So what spring is okay in, a, in this metal housing? I don't know about other ones because I know there's MK, there's CNC. Oh, and that's the other thing. The MK and CC gearboxes uh, they may be able to have metal cylinder heads in them because they are designed different to what this is. So if I put this in the APS one, it probably wouldn't work as I said before because it's not designed for it. It would probably break something, I I'm sure of it, but I haven't done it myself. But other metal gearboxes that aren't APS can actually handle a metal cylinder head and metal piston head because they're designed for it and for that way. We don't sell any, but you can actually do that. Um, the thing I want to talk about was springs. So you can have an M90. They all come with M100 springs, but you can have an M90 if you want to. It's up to you. It depends what you're doing with your build. It's your blaster. Um, but you can have an M90, M100, M110 is probably the highest. If you get any higher, it kind of binds up around this quarter bit here with the piston because there's just so much spring for it to pull back. The only way to fix that would be to shock stroke the gear in the piston, but even then, it's still a bit too much for it. But the highest I would go would be an M110. Now, the problem that we saw when people first got these was as soon as they got it, they just put an M110 in and it broke. It broke and cracked the housing. Oh, sorry. It broke and cracked the housing uh, there. Uh, up here or around here as well. So what we did to fix that, so you can have an M110 in there, is see these little corners here, just so you guys can see it. So see these little corners here? We just got a dremel and we rounded them. So we just made them from being square and we just rounded it to a little circle. You don't need to go massively big and you don't need to go tiny. You just need like in the middle, just a little bit amount to ready set. I explain it into another video, but I guess in this video I can explain it a lot more in depth. So we would ready set. The bottom one is more important than the top, but if you're doing it, hey, you might as well do it the top. So basically, you just get your dremel bit in there on the side of you and just dremel it in there, dremel it in there, and then just get your uh, just get a round file and just clean it up in there and just make sure it looks you know, nice and pretty. Um, and just round it off. So the bottom one's more important because that's mainly where, you know, the tapper plate and actual movement happening with the nozzle and the tapper plate and the turn springs. So that's where a lot of movement is. So that's mainly where the bottom one breaks. So that's the main part where you'd radius it. The top part, that you don't have to radius it, but it wouldn't hurt, you know, it's always good. So you might as well just do that up there as well, but I have seen it radius down here and it crack up here. It's like, it's a rare thing. You really don't know if, if it will or won't happen. So you might as well just play it safe and just, just radius it up there as well. Um, but again, you don't really have to, but it's probably preferred just to do it anyway. Other thing is, is you can change these bushings out to Lonex 8mm double grid bushings, which is what I would recommend because they are fantastic. It's like a bushing bearing and one hybrid kind of thing, and they're very good. So you can change that out as well. The other thing I want to talk about is MOSFETs. You can, oops, sorry, I'm up in the camera. You can have MOSFETs in it. You can have, I've put P runs in, I've put Leviathans in. I've put many other MOSFETs in. You can have it in this or nylon housings. Um, depending on what one you have is what you do. We don't stock any, um, but if you buy the MOSFET yourself and bring it into us, we can put it in for you. But it is that if it got damaged during post or if you've handled it roughly before and we haven't known about it and it does break, that isn't really our fault. Um, because we won't try and break it ourselves, um, but we do the best we can. And it's just, it's just a bit hard because if it breaks, 
we can't replace and give you a new one. We, we don't have any, but we can do it. We can fit them in here. Uh, many of the techs and people, the boys that play Gelsoft, um, they have MOSFETs as well, and they run fine. The APS gearboxes do really well. Um, so you can have that as well. Um, and the other thing with the metal housings is motors. So because it's a V2, uh, we don't have metal Janet gearboxes, so we wouldn't, uh, yeah, we wouldn't have any metal Janet gearboxes. But if you do find one, I mean, the parts I recommend for this will probably work in there fine. But for our APS range, and I'm only talking about the APS range because that's all I have here that is metal, is um, the motors. So they come 480 and Lonex does 480 and you can have Lonex 480 motors in there. It depends uh, what one you want because they all do different things. You've got just speed, uh, just torque and speed and torque, A1, A2 and A3. Um, it is up to you on what one you would like, uh, depending on what build you're doing. If you're doing something with really heavy spring, you'd want more torque so you can pull it. If you want a fast gun like a laser beam, you'd want more speed. If you're doing a heavy spring and you do want that more speed, just go speed and torque, A1 motor. So it's really up to you what you want. They're all fantastic. I've used them all and they all are great. So it really is up to you. But that is it guys, that's probably everything I would and wouldn't recommend in a metal gearbox housing and why. And I hope you guys enjoyed, um, please drop a like and comment down below and I'll see you guys in either another tech talk video or a tech repair video like the AK shotgun. But I'll definitely be seeing you guys around or another blasted episode. This is Riley at Tactical Edge signing off and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.